Management Association or something like that also did a report in 2002, 2003 that give you very basic outline of things to look for in comparing cost and contract provisions. Now, I'll tell you what's really going on. They're not interested so much in the water. They're not interested so much in the sewer. They're not interested so much in the environment. They're interested in your licensed operators. They are buying something from you. You ain't selling them a damn thing. I'm going to make an observation. It's strictly a wild-eyed notion. I'm part of the baby boomers. Now, your parents, they don't want to pay anymore for water and sewer. The demographics are on a political front that rates, nobody wants rates to go up. The only way you're going to do that is to find a substitute for government taking control of these systems. When you couple that with the, every single one of these proposals has a very strong component for changing the telemetry and the control of the plants. Not even necessarily the technologies. They're going to come in and put in their own SCADA systems, their own quality control systems, and they're all going to be tied wirelessly to some guy that sits in an office for Violi in Sturridge. Or in Houston for Violi, where their corporate headquarters is. And every morning he's going to get up and he's going to turn on his computer, and every single plant, whether it's one or whether it's 2,000 throughout the U.S., is going to pop up. And if any of them have red lights on it, he's going to go to the red light, he's going to find out what it is, and then he's going to call Lee, and he's going to call up Mike Tower and say, Mike, you can go make a service call because you've got a problem. Otherwise, there's not going to be anybody there. That's what they want. They want your licensed operators. That's what this is all about. They realize, in my opinion, that in 20 years, there's going to be nobody left that's going to be able to operate these things, and they want those people on their payrolls. These are the people that were there when the plants were built. These are the people that know where the band-aids are, where the bubble gum is, where the new pipes are, what happens when you get four inches of rain. That's what they're looking for. They're willing to take a, you know, take it in the shorts today because in 10 years, those people and those resources are going to be worth four times what they're worth today. That's my opinion. This isn't about water and sewer. This is about getting your employees in institutional history. And think about it for a minute. I run a business. I have an 18-year employee who does spare parts for you know 700 units in the US. If she were to walk out the door, I'm shit out of luck. <laughs> I couldn't tell you how we modified the wheels or the or the aeration system on a piece of equipment, but she's been around, she knows it. She knows what file to look in. She doesn't have to look in the file half the time. She just has a number and she goes back to our supplier that manufactured them for us and says, I need this for this facility and we send it off and make money. If she would have walked out the door, I got no business. You think about that for a minute. All your operators disappear for 20 years. What choice do you have in 20 years? You got none. Because it's all proprietary information by contract. You don't have a right to any of it. Who's the mass buys no generational transfer of knowledge? Because by contract, it then belongs to whoever has the contract.